filled with high-speed jets, daredevil display teams and classic planes. It's a spectacular free weekend for the whole family and we'll be amongst the crowds to bring you the thrills of Europe's largest free air show. The air show is absolutely brilliant. Including travel updates every 15 minutes when you need it most. Proud to be the official radio station of the Sunderland International Air Show. There's just something for everybody. Be part of the year to remember. BBC Newcastle, radio for the North East. Some bright or sunny spells today. Also a few showers developing this afternoon, especially towards North Northumberland. Highs of 16 Celsius, Jilly. Thank you. Now the coast road is still quite slow. We have had an accident this morning just before the corner house lights. I'm pleased to say that the car has been recovered, but it is still quite busy as you're heading towards Newcastle this morning. At back with the A19 northbound at Killingworth Way, an accident with one car involved. Recovery work continues uh, on the entry slip, so that's looking pretty busy as well. Oh, hold on a sec, it's just flashing up. It's clearing, it's clearing. Uh, the recovery work is completed. The accident just cleared now. A19 at the A1056 Killingworth Way, so that's starting to get back to normal, which is good news. Into Newcastle, across the Tyne, you've got around six minutes there at the end of the A184, just sluggish traffic across the Tyne, Askew Road looking slow to the Reggie Bridge, uh, usual really for this time in the morning. The A1, the Western Bypass, northbound, uh, not bad, a little sluggish around Washington services, but generally moving. Further south, North Yorkshire, um, we do have problems on the A19, that's one lane closed both ways between Cleveland's Tontine and the A684 North Allerton. An accident with a lorry travelling south crashed through the central reservation, it's now facing the wrong way way on the carriageway so we do have queues either side so north and southbound very slow but the team at tees will keep you up to date public transport's running well call me if you spot any of the problems 0191 233 that's the latest i'm jilly hope whether you're making your tea or making your way home this evening there's a one-stop shop with everything you need to know and it's john harland and lucas from four o'clock bbc newcastle northeast travel every 15 minutes do you remember the opening ceremony for the uh, Beijing Olympics? Vaguely. Oh, I remember the closing dramatic, ceremony. Dramatic stuff. Military precision. Masses of people all in unison. The choreography in that was just breathtaking. They've got thousands of dancers, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. So we, I've, I've seen the first pictures of rehearsals for hours set Morris dancing and people on fields and ca cows and clouds. And it, Gordon Brown doesn't. He, well, he, he might, but he's not going. He's been invited, turned his uh, invitation down. We're asking you this morning, what have you turned down? A chance you've missed. Sue says, listen to this, having tickets to Prince's after show party at the O2, I was too tired to stay, and he showed up. OK, what have, you, what have you just missed out on chances you might just have missed? 0191232 6565. Of course, you can add them to our Facebook page. And our Facebook page is, uh, at B is BBC Newcastle Radio for the North East. 2012 will be a year to remember in the North East. Be part of a year to remember. BBC Newcastle Radio for the North East. 20 past eight. Now today, for the first time in its 85-year history, Newcastle City Hall will bear a plaque commemorating the life and the work of a northeast musician, the unforgettable Alan Hall. Alan performed at the City Hall with the band Lindisfarne more than 130 times. That's some feat, and the plaque's going to be unveiled this morning in front of many of Alan's family and friends. Former Lindisfarne singer Ray Jackson says it's a fantastic way to remember one of the region's best-known musicians. Well, I think Alan was an ambassador for the northeast of England in particular. I mean, Fog of the Time was just an emblem. It was the, the one song that caught everyone's imagination. It's used now in loads of newspapers and magazines whenever they talk about Tyneside or Newcastle. I think it's a great honour for uh, Alan in particular. Uh, we played here about 120 times altogether in, uh, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, Newcastle is a fantastic city. It's a great accolade and we're very proud of it. Well, I had a chat with his former manager, Barry McKay, who's been lobbying the council for the plaque for many years. I think we were passionate about it. Um, Alan is very, very special. Um, and, uh, of course, not many people have performed at Newcastle City Hall 135 times. 
which is the actual number of performances Alan's done. I think the Beatles have been there three times, um, Elton John a few times, but, you know, this is exceptional, really. It's the Alan's musical home. And you would say he's an exceptional... He was an exceptional man. I think uh, Alan Hull uh, is the greatest songwriter to have ever come out of Newcastle. What, was he an, an unsung hero? Or was he underrated? Alan was a songwriter's songwriter, and although when Linda's farm uh, hit the dizzy heights that they did in the early 70s, uh, their album Fog and the Time was actually the biggest selling album that year in the UK by a British act, um, the fact is that other songwriters, such as Elvis Costello, who was a fan of Alan, have mm. gone public and said, you know, Alan was underrated. Um, and this may be the case, except we know from uh, a friend and uh, producer of the late John Lennon that John Lennon admired Alan Hull and Lindisfarne and that he had Lindisfarne albums and the Pipe Dream album. So that's, if that's being underrated, um, <laughs> you know... That, that's that, okay. That'll do. That'll be do what any other episode. Now, what do his family think of the idea and, and the battle that it's taken to get it? Well, Alan's family are all thrilled that um, Alan is being honoured by the city council in this way. All of Alan's family are going to be there. Uh, his wife, Pat, uh, his three daughters, they're thrilled that it's happening. Ray, Ray Laidlaw was very funny when we asked him what, what he thought Alan would make of this all. What, what do you think Alan would make of this? Well, Alan would be delighted. Uh, I remember uh, being in a car with Alan, going past the City Hall many years ago, and Linda's farm had just started a run of, uh, I think it was 12 shows in a row, and there was a big sign-up along the front of the City Hall that said Linda's farm occupation. <laughs> And I remember Alan being really chuffed about that. Um, he would be uh, delighted. Alan was a very serious songwriter. He took his craft extremely seriously, and uh, he'd be very pleased. That's Barry McKay, the former manager of the North East band Lindisfarne and, of course, Alan Hull's manager. So well done to, well, his family and all the people who campaigned long and hard for that plaque, quite something for that to go up there on the City Hall. So celebrations will commence later on today. We're still getting texts and reaction to some of our stories, especially this this story. We'll be looking at it in about half an hour's time, but keep your reaction coming in in the meantime about not just school proms. They're very, very prevalent now all over the place. But this idea of graduations from nursery, from nurseries, uh, graduations with caps and gowns, I wish I had got to a school prom, says Leroy. I would have spent a fortune on a nice ball gown. I think he's got his tongue in his cheek there. Joe says, listen to this. At our junior school prom this week, we had loads of children taking time out of school to get their hair done and even their teeth whitened. Joe says, Seriously? with an ex-ED, yes. Teeth he's a bit like, Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people who've got in touch, especially in our Facebook page, are saying, it's great fun, and what's the big deal? Have we been a bit churlish, complaining about this? 0191 How much pressure are you under if you're a parent when it comes to events like this? Start your text with letters BBC and text to 81333. BBC Newcastle, radio for the North East. It's almost here. Europe's biggest free air show is about to get underway. The 24th Sunderland International Air Show launches tomorrow night ahead of the big weekend on Wearside. Well, let's speak now to Phil Armstrong, who's lead singer with the Counterfeit 60s, one of the bands performing there. Morning, Phil. Good morning. Why are you excited about performing at the air show? What does the event represent for you? Uh, a huge opportunity, to be honest, for the band to play to the reckon of 10,000 people are going to show up. So that'll be pretty thrilling. Are most of your gigs here in the North East? No, we travel around. We generally do theatres, so we're used to playing to sort of, you know, five, six hundred people, not ten thousand. So this is going to be huge, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Do you think that 60s music is still relevant nowadays, though? Oh, uh, very much so. I think it's never really gone away, that's the thing. You've got um, nostalgia for the people who were around at the time, um, although they do claim that if you remember the 60s, you weren't actually there. 
Um, <laughs> you've got, um, well, the likes of radio, which is keeping the music alive. Um, you know, the sort of chart rundown shows, that kind of thing. Uh, so our audience, I think, is very much cross-generational. Um, you know, even the smallest children seem to know the words for the songs better than we do. <laughs> So do you think that you'll actually quite, you'll appeal to, you know, a younger generation as well when you perform at the air show? Yeah, because I mean, we've done things like weddings before, you know, from so you've got from the maddest, oldest Andy dancing around um, <laughs> to the youngest children throwing confetti at you, and they all enjoy it. As long as it's confetti. Now, you played at Whitley Bay Playhouse earlier in the year. The photos of the concert look incredible. Tell us how it went. Oh, it was brilliant. Uh, we booked the Playhouse round about the sort of November time, and we sold tickets very steadily over the Christmas, um, and there was a sudden rush at the end, so we practically sold it out. Uh, the audience were brilliant, terrific, and we had a, just a tremendous night, and we're back there in March, so that's nice. And a little bird tells me as well you've played the odd gig in Bahrain, is that right? I have done, yes, with a, a gentleman called Steve Daggett, uh, the Alan Hull connection here, because he played with uh, Lindisfarne for quite some time. And are you going to actually, you, so you're performing at the air show Tomorrow night, that's correct. Are you going to be on Friday night? Are you going to actually be? You going to stay and watch some of the planes on Saturday and Sunday? Um, no, we'll be working. <laughs> oh no, you missed the best bit. No rest for the wicked. All right, they're brilliant. Thank you very much, there, Phil Armstrong. He's the lead singer of the Counterfeit Sixties. Quick look through some of the papers that you're waking up to this morning. The Daily Mail says David Cameron and Ed Miliband have given Miliband have given their wholehearted support to a campaign for the UK to have.